Cognitive Dissonance Simplified. Now, cognitive dissonance is a remarkably simple theory, but as we shall see, the applications of it are enormous. First thing to know, cognitive dissonance happens to every single human being, no matter how old you are or where you're from. It's probably the single most important psychological topic that you need to understand. So what is cognitive dissonance? It's containing of two words, cognitive and dissonance. The word cognitive comes from the word cognition. And the word cognition means belief or thought or idea. And the word dissonance means a disagreement, a discrepancy or a tension. So we could say that cognitive dissonance simply means thoughts in disagreement. So cognitive dissonance always happens when we have two thoughts that point in two opposite directions. And we are in the middle, we experience a psychological discomfort. And the medical doctors and psychologists actually, they define this discomfort even as a physical injury. So cognitive dissonance is a real thing. It's really stressful for us humans. So subconsciously what happens is when you have two opposite thoughts, your mind jumps in and it will try to close the gap between those two opposite thoughts. For the most part, this happens without you even noticing it. The purpose is to relieve you from this pain and make you happy once again. Now I will show you three examples of cognitive dissonance in our day-to-day -day life. And this is Mark. Mark is your average smoking dude. He smokes on average one pack a day. And one time he saw on the TV a scientific study about the dangers of smoking. They talked about how bad it is for your health and that it can cause lung cancer. So a new cognition is formed, which is cigarettes cause cancer. If Mark was a non-smoker, he would have no problems with this cognition. I do not smoke and cigarettes cause cancer. They go perfectly together. But since Mark's belief is I do smoke, they don't go together. What we have is a classical cognitive dissonance situation. The most simple solution would be to quit. But of course, this is easier said than done. Mark has other options. He could tell himself some of these excuses. The evidence is inconclusive. Or my boss is smoking. It must be okay. My boss is very intelligent. I can switch to filter tipped cigarettes. They trap cancerous materials. Mark could use any of these strategies to continue being a smoker. Any of these strategies would destroy the new belief of cigarettes cause cancer. He could also do a complete new strategy of adding a new cognition. I may lead a shorter life, but it will be more enjoyable. So Mark would add a new cognition into the mix. Smoking is important for my relaxation. So if we looked at Mark's situation in slow motion, we find him at the crossroad of two thoughts. First, I should stop smoking. And the second thought, I can't stop smoking, which leads him to feel like a failure. Of course, he only feels a failure to himself. Other people will not see him as a failure. To protect his ego and not feel as a failure, Mark could tell himself, I'm not too weak. I really don't want to stop. The evidence was fake. I need smoking for my relaxation, or I may live a shorter but happier life. With all these excuses, Mark can continue to smoke without feeling bad about himself. Don't get me wrong, in the eyes of Mark, he's firmly convinced of them. He doesn't see them as excuses. For him, these are facts. What do we do when we experience cognitive dissonance? We simply justify our behavior or our beliefs to ourselves. And we do that in two ways. By either constructing a total new belief, we invent something that we didn't believe before, or we change an existing belief. So what we currently think right now, we just change it. In other words, we go over to fantasy land. And in fantasy land, everything is amazing. If you experience a lot of cognitive dissonance, we can literally end up in the craziest fantasy land. Let's look at two more examples. The classical New Year's good goals, the diet goals. So we have been eating all the garbage in the world that we actually know we shouldn't been eating, but we still want to continue eating it. So we have two beliefs. The first, I'm eating garbage. And the second, I shouldn't eat it. So we tell ourselves, as soon as the new year comes, I will get started. I will make a diet. And as long as the new year is not there, I don't have to get started. So we can continue eating all the garbage. In the meantime, we're making a plan of how we will have a healthy diet once the new year comes. But until new year comes, we can keep on doing what we're doing. That's the point. Our cognitive dissonance is resolved. Now next year finally arrives and we're starting with the diet and the workout. And it's a pretty harsh journey. And as we are running and going to the gym and doing all kinds of exercises, a new cognition is formed 
which is, I should work out, but I don't want to work out. We could tell ourselves, well, actually working out is pretty dangerous and I have a friend who has a bad knee and uh, you can get a back pain from it and all kinds of injuries, so maybe it's better to stop working out. Or we could tell ourselves, well, I didn't completely reach my goal, but I lost around 10 kilograms or 5 kilograms or like 10 pounds, which is not what I intended to lose, but at least, hey, it's better than nothing. And once again, the whole plan of dieting and living healthy is abandoned. Let's look at another example. Here we have Mark again, and Mark is in love with Stephanie, when he's heads over heels in love with her. Now, but something has happened lately, she doesn't respond to him anymore, and when he reaches out to her, she doesn't reply back, and it's very hard for him to get a hold of her. So he has suspected it already, and it's the truth, Stephanie is already with somebody else. And they have even declared their love all over social media for everyone to see. And on top of that, all the friends and colleagues congratulating the new couple and everybody is so happy that they found each other. So Mark's cognitive dissonance sets in and tells him what to do. He would be thinking, well, if I find the right words, if I could just express my feelings, maybe she would see how much I love her and will come back to me. And then we will have this awesome relationship again. Or he could tell himself, well, maybe if I wait long enough, yeah. Maybe if she breaks up with the guy, then she will come running back to me, so he could just wait for her. And then when she comes back to me, we will have this amazing relationship again. And well, if this all didn't work out and Mark is old and alone, he will be like, well, I'm just meant to be alone. What happened here? Simply put, Mark had two contradicting thoughts. And this cognitive dissonance made him unable to see the facts. For the sake of this exercise, let's write them down and let's look at some of the obvious facts together. Fact number one, she was just not that into you. Simply, if she was this much into you as Mark believes, she would have not left him like this. Number two, your relationship was not as good as you thought. If it was this great of a relationship as Mark believed, she would have not left him in a blink of an eye for another guy. Fact number three, she has moved on and is happy. Mark ignores the facts due to cognitive dissonance. He's unable to see the truth. And the simple truth is that she is happy with somebody else. Number four, you found happiness before, you can do it again. Number five, she is just one out of four billion women. For Mark, she's absolutely special and he's sure he will never find someone like her. Number six, you can find someone that is better for you than her. These are just some obvious facts that we can clearly see, but Mark can't see them. Let's look at Mark's situation with Stephanie in slow motion as well. His first thought is clearly that they had an amazing relationship together and that they were deeply in love. And he probably even had fantasized about having kids with her and all this perfect future that they're going to have. And the other thought is clearly <laughs> that she's with another guy. Yeah, and the thought is she didn't love me at all. Those two thoughts obviously don't go together, they contradict each other. But Mark wants the love story to be true. This is why he comes up with excuses for why it could be true. In psychology, this is known as dissonance reduction behavior. So Mark has two solutions available to deal with the situation. The first is the cognitive dissonance one. That's where he cries and he waits and he ends up alone. Maybe he even tells himself, all women are liars and cheaters and she broke my heart. So basically it's a bunch of crying you know, and sadness. This strategy could be rounded up as I'm a victim or which I call a comfortable lie. Well, the problem with this solution is rather obvious. It's a bunch of sadness and crying and it doesn't really help Mark at all. The second solution is the solution of self-improvement. That's when Mark hits the gym again, when he's back in the dating scene and he's going out there meeting new women when he's reading business books, self-development books, maybe he starts an online side business to hire his income, trying to become the best version of himself. So the solution is called, I have to change, or the hard truth. So the strategy on the left is what we know as learned helplessness. Learned because Mark learned to be helpless. It's not that you're born helpless. And solution two is known as the realistic approach, but Unfortunately, it's an uncomfortable one. In other words, the left side is a short-term fake relief and the right side is long-term happiness. So looking at these two approaches, which one would you choose? 
rather obvious, right? Of course, we would all choose the realistic approach, no brainer, but you'd be surprised how many millions of people choose the learned helplessness instead and are stuck for the rest of their lives in their own fantasy land. One last thing about cognitive dissonance that you have to understand is we all have our unique sets of beliefs and ideas about how the world is and how we are. We see ourselves as very peaceful, good-hearted type of, uh, of guy. We see ourselves protecting the environment. We have a certain point of view on our health and fitness, about our relationships and about our money and our business. So any information or anyone in our life that comes to us with bad news in terms of that he contradicts our beliefs, we reject it. Back in the day, in the Middle Ages, they would literally even kill the messenger. To some degree, we even do this today. We don't kill the messenger, obviously, but we ignore people who give us helpful advice. We say they are stupid, they don't know what they're talking about, and so on and so forth. We try to ignore the message. That is called dissonance reduction behavior. It's maladaptive. It prevents you from finding real solutions to your problem and prevents you from learning new facts. In other words, there's your ego and the dissonance reduction behavior protects your ego to basically keep you happy and satisfied and keep you smiling. But this can have disastrous consequences because what it happens is you become irrational. And when you become irrational, you go straight back to fantasy land. This was the theory of cognitive dissonance simplified. I'm Eric Truman. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumb up. And below this video, I have more free information for you. So go ahead and check that out. Watch next. What to do against cognitive dissonance.